The Ensemble podcast is intended for professional financial advisors. This content is created in partnership with our sponsor, Net Wealth Investments Limited, ABN 85090 569 109, AFSL 230 975, and is limited to publicly available information. Before acting on any general advice, you should consider whether appropriate and obtain financial advice from a qualified financial advisor. Ensemble does not hold an AFS license and does not provide any financial advice or services or endorse any general advice. If a PDS or IM exists, you should obtain a copy and review it thoroughly before making a decision. Advice tech. As if it wasn't enough to be across TMD's Alpha Beta, Rule of 72 and all the other nuances of financial advice. Now advisors are expected to be across all the technology options too and there's so many of them. But never fear, Peter D is here. Join me each week on a journey of discovery through the software and apps on offer for advisors and advice businesses. So let's dive in, fellow advice explorers. This podcast is proudly sponsored by NetWealth. Imagine a world where you can offer clients access to local and international investments. A world where you can engage with clients meaningfully, backed by powerful data and insights with mobile-friendly technology. A world where you can build business efficiencies through scaled managed accounts and bulk reporting. And a world where you can get all the latest news, research and insights to spot the changes that really matter. Wealth is more than just money. It's about opportunity and progress. A world of opportunity awaits you at netwealth.com.au forward slash woo. Hello and welcome to the Ensemble Advice Tech Podcast. I'm Peter Diamantidis and the guest joining me here today to deep dive into MoneySoft is, well, something of a guru in the open banking space, so we'll make sure to pick his brain on that. Previously worked at Big Blue or IBM to the rest of us and has an engineering degree with majors in aerospace and avionics. Thank you so much for joining me on the show, John Shaw. Thank you, Peter. Thank you very much. What an intro. I think that's the best one I've ever had. Oh, Wonderful. Well, thank you. Well, thank you. And I've got to say, I can't believe as many conversations as we had at overseas conferences that it's never come up that you've got an aerospace well, it's not really relevant, is it, in the world that we're in? But oh, I don't know, but it sounds pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, I, so, yeah. <laughs> I, I pull it out from time to time and yeah. I dine out on it when it's appropriate, yes. Exactly, particularly with the nerds. <laughs> See, nerds like me think that's really <laughs> exciting. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. It was fun to do. Yeah. I'm sure it was. I'm sure it was. So before we pick your brain about money soft and there's lots to cover um i want to get to know you a bit better as a user of technology so all the listeners out there can get a feel for you what is your most used emoji do you even use emojis i do use emojis and actually it's an interesting question and i uh, have had a look through a couple of apps that i use just because and, and we can we can be honest about it that, it that it's a um posed question so i actually looked through three apps right yeah to see what is my most used emoji. Right. And it's actually um, depends on the app, right? So I think in, in WhatsApp, it's thumbs up, tears of laughter, and um, fist pump. And then in, in SMS, it's um, thumbs up, tears of laughter, and love eyes, probably because I send SMSs right. to my wife, right? Right. And I think in email, it's tears of laughter, smiley face, and thumbs up. So thumbs up came up all three th- times. So it must be that one. That's okay, the, yeah. okay. Yeah. I love though that it's a little different based on the audience. Yeah, right? that's in the top of that. You're talking to. Yeah. yeah, exactly, exactly. Now, if we had to do away with all the all the apps on our smartphone, I mean that's quite distressing to even say it really, and you could only keep three, which three would you keep? Um, it was a toss up. It's a toss up between WhatsApp and, and the SMS app. Like I'm I'm old fashioned. I just like using phone. My yep. phone is a phone, right? So, Heavens um, to Murgatroyd, so, I can't yeah. believe it. <laughs> so it was a toss-up between WhatsApp and SMS, but I went with WhatsApp, so I'd definitely keep WhatsApp. Mm-hmm. I would keep my Firefox web browser. I'm an Android guy. I, I keep my Firefox right. web browser and I'd keep my email app. Yes. And I, so, I presume we get phone for free, right? The phone app, we get that for free. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. That's a given. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, maybe it won't be going forward, right? <laughs> maybe we won't get a phone yeah. on our phone anymore. Yeah, we might not. That's right. <laughs> yeah. So that'd be those three. So WhatsApp, Firefox, and, and the email app. Kicking it old school. I like Give it. Me <laughs> <laughs> so let's dive into MoneySoft. So now, okay. 
I'm figuring most people listening have at the very least heard of you guys, if not played with or used the app. But but just for the, everybody's benefit, let's take it up a bit higher so we can understand where you guys sit. Yep. So in advice tech or fintech, kick your tech space, what category do you guys normally fall under? You know, who are you generally lined up against when somebody's yep. looking for a solution? Sure. Look, there's, there's a few areas and it depends on what the customer is looking for. But the main ones are you know, client portal and, and ongoing service portal, know your client and fact find or KYC and fact find yep. um, and then process automation. That's sort of the three main areas that we fall into and it will depend on what the customer is looking for as to who we're up against. So you know, client portal, surprisingly, is usually x Yeah, right? It's not you know, who, you, who the usual suspects are. I mean, my prosperity might be in there. Mm-hmm. On the ongoing service side, but client portals usually X Plan. Um, you know, KYC and Fact Find X Plan Midwinter again. It's generally the the traditional CRMs. Yep. Uh, process automation. It's pretty rare that we fight anyone in that yep. space. We generally have that nailed. So um, I'd say, you know, but that's a higher level or a higher value part of the puzzle. So yeah, that's that's where we play and generally who we're we're talking to customers about. Okay, so and I know, like, if you go onto your website, there is the opportunity for a member of the public to access yes. MoneySoft. But yes. I'm assuming, really, you know, the game you guys are at is is channel partners. So it's it's going Correct. through to yeah. from advice firms right through to super funds and all sorts of people um, yes. to provide that tool. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. for say an advice term, what's the primary problem you guys are trying to solve for them? You know, what's the thing that'll just they'll just sure. be going, oh, this is fantastic. This is exactly what we need. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the I'll start with the company vision. And mm-hmm. The company vision really is to help um, close the advice gap. So there's a whole bunch of people out there. We know everyone. You know, there's a, a lot of advisors who want the high net worth. They're lucrative clients. Yep. They they pay the bills. But then there's a huge cohort of Australians, uh, and this is true all around the world, of people who want financial advice but find it difficult to get because of the cost to service. Yeah. So where we're really trying to play is um, is to close that advice gap and providing features, functionality, capability that helps advisors do that in various ways, which may be understanding a client's cash flow and understanding how they might be able to execute a strategic plan to increase their wealth. It might be automating process and making just the fact find, or sorry, the prospecting and then fact find process quicker and removing all that double keying of data. So you make the process more efficient. It doesn't cost as much. You can offer it cheaper. And then for ongoing service, same sort of thing. You want to be able to service those um, less sophisticated clients, you know, non-high net worths in a way that's scalable and cost effective. So, yeah. you know, really all of those things, client portal, no client fact find data integrations, process automation feeds into that closing the advice gap objective. <laughs> And I guess that's an evolution of how um, the advice industry has looked as, at these sort of tools because I'm betting early on it was probably taken very much of, oh, look, if you're in the game of cash flow advice or coaching, yeah. then sure, use this. But they probably hadn't got their head around the extent to which you can make fact-finding or accurate fact-finding uh, a different prospect. So run us through that because I think there will still be people out there who who haven't fully understood that you know these type of data feeds and this type of information can give you – a really fulsome fact find. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, look, the key part that we found with fact find, um, Peter, is the pre-population of data, mm-hmm. um, and it's one of the one of the main capabilities that MoneySoft's got that's probably hidden from most people. You know, <laughs> apart from our apart from our enterprise customers like Link Group, as I was talking to you about earlier. Um, yep. So the pre-population of fact find and making that fact find process easier for clients does make it more accurate because they'll have, you know, most most people, you and me included, will have an intent, attention span of maybe 10, 15 minutes, right, where you're yeah. actually really getting to something. And that first 10, 15 minutes is where you, you concentrate on doing things properly. And then after that, it becomes, oh, God, help me, please just get through this. Right? <laughs> so, <laughs> so. So pre-population of data is really important. And we pre-populate from X-Plan and then synchronise back to X-Plan. We can also pre-populate from other CRMs as well. So um, to sort of go back to your question on that, you know, accurate fact find piece, we think the key is pre-population and making the client's job just to fill in the gaps, right. not to run through an entire fact find and do the whole thing, right? Yeah. Because that's where you lose clients. That's where they lose interest. That's where 
you get inaccurate data. So. And to that point, then what you're talking about filling in the gaps is anything that you otherwise couldn't get by connecting a um, financial instrument, whatever that is. It could be their super Correct. account. It could be yeah. a bank account. Yep. So they, they connect all those things through to the app and then it's just the other stuff. <laughs> so anything that doesn't right. fit in that. Right, okay. Yeah. That's right, yeah. Yeah, so and that process automation, I mean, obviously we're talking you know, fairly advanced level here or you know, straight away. But the process automation that I spoke about right at the start, the the very first thing that most people would know about MoneySoft is that we automatically collect financial account data, right? Which yeah. is a, pro, a form of process automation. Instead of advisor or client service officer having, go, having to go out and ask the client for statements and balances and so on, yeah, we just get it all in the client portal and that can be pumped across into explain or whatever tool is being used by the advisor and it's and it's up to that to the day yeah so yes that can be used in fact it can be used across you know uh, ongoing services and reviews and, and all sorts of things and then there's a whole bunch of other process automation that can be added on top of that yes so then because the other thing that i can see that that's going to be powerful for is is the um, affordability of insurance, for example, where you know we've sort of been tasked over time with not just how, how much insurance do you need, but can they afford it? Um, which, bless their cotton socks, what a wonderful question to ask. <laughs> can they afford it? Well, it's an excellent point. Right. And so having data on hand that at least you can point to, well, there's certainly a gap, you know, yeah. so there's certainly money available or Look, it might be a bit tight, but I can see here the um, forty thousand dollars per annum spent on whatever the luxury item is. Oh, right. yeah. Do you want to trade that off? Certainly makes that a more real conversation rather than, I mean, we've all experienced where the clients see, hey, you know, how your expense level, what do you think it is? And to be quite frank, only one percent are even ever within yeah. QE of getting that right. Like yeah. people just aren't onto it that well, are they? None of us are really. Oh, we're not. I mean, look, I use money soft every week and I'm not really onto it until I look at it. Yeah. Then I know, right? Yeah. So that, yeah, exactly. that's absolutely true. Um, and great point that you make about insurance. And I don't know whether you knew this already or not, and, and I don't think you did, but Peter Malekis, the founder of money soft, who, who originally came up with the, the idea of automate, you know, having this system to automate the um, analysis of cash flow to understand how much free cash flow there was, started in insurance advice. Really? And he did it for exactly the reason you just said. That yeah. is exactly why he invented MoneySoft in the first place. So, And it's not that? just affordability, right? I mean, one of the things that's coming up all the time where your premiums are rising, um, people are struggling with it. And one of the the most important things I think we can do for clients in that situation is tweaking features, you know, on things like income protection. Well, it's very hard to to talk through increasing a waiting period unless you can get a good sense of how their cash flow is going yeah. and whether that's, that's realistic. Right. So to me, um, I mean, I'm, I'm pleased at how uh, more intrinsically linked cash flow is now getting in the advice process because it's sort of the beginning of, beginning of it all, really. Yes, I mean, yes, that's right. Yeah, and you know, that's that's true, and I think another part of it that, that people forget is that um, some advice strategies will generate cash flow, and that's a great thing to show to the client as well. <laughs> yeah. Say, hey, there's some cash coming back in, yeah. right? and if you can actually demonstrate that and show how it affects their, you know, the overall cash flow, it's a good thing. You know, that's, yeah. a, that's a way to, to demonstrate that as well. And so, if so, an advisor can, um, you know, engages with a the client. They sort of set up their appropriate um, connections to, you know, their super funds and bank accounts and all that sort of stuff. And so, it's feeding through. How far back is so? Once that happens, I know there's a history you already get as part of yes. that first sort of turn on. How far back is the data they get from day one, sort of thing? Transaction data can go back 365 days, 12 okay. months, uh, or anything in between zero and 365 days, depending on what the business wants. Right. Uh, but our standards are either either 90 days or 365 days, Yeah. which we just switch on uh, according to, the, to what the business wants. That's for transaction data. Yep. Balance data is from the day the account is linked forward. We do right. not get, we can't get historical balance data yet. We might be able to get it with open banking. But we yeah, okay. Get. Okay. And look, that's an interesting, it's an interesting concept because I know, Look, cash flow coaching or whatever you choose to call it is a different game and it's a different way of engaging. And and when we started looking at it, the thing that 
the, the dread was about, okay, you start engaging with somebody now, but you can't really have an impact for months because you've got to collect a whole lot of information initially. Like there's a let's watch and see what you do. So being able to get transaction history back for up to a year yeah. means there's no waiting. It's like, okay, let's take a look at the transactions in and out. That's what's been going true. on, you know? Yeah. And so that is, that sort of takes out a whole chunk of what would otherwise be torturous for both the client and us. <laughs> That's right, yeah. Sort of monitor them over time. So That's I right. do think it's something I know I didn't realise um, was part of the sort of wins that you get um, with this sort of information. And, of course, you know, the way you analyse that, can, I'm betting, can be quite superficial, you know, top down or can actually be in a detailed fashion bottom up. Yep. What's the usual, like is there a usual way advisors approach that or do you find it's pretty evenly split? Um, the ones who look at 12 months worth of data, funny enough, generally go down into more detail. Okay. Uh, and the three months worth is usually high level. Just give us a general picture of where you're at and we'll extrapolate that and yep. you know, assume that's how you operate. Yeah. Um, and we do have tools in the system that help advisors. So the ones that get detailed will generally have their own set of custom categories so they'll have a way their own chart of accounts that they categorize the transactions with and on top of that they will generally put in their own categorization rules right into into their you know across their client base so we're able to do that sort of process automation for them yep uh, which takes away a lot of the pain of having to go through client by client categorize the transactions make them do it and then work out where their cash flow is so we can really help automate that and make that a little quicker. But it takes a bit of work for, you know, from the business themselves and, and with us to get that in place. Um, yeah, but it's and well it, worth it. Yeah, well once you do it, right? Once you do yeah. these things once, I'm, yeah. I'm, a, I'm a big believer in those things. There's some of these things that are torturous once, but then once, they've, once they're done, it makes everything easier. And yeah. uh, the thing I like about that expression, you know, chart, your own chart of accounts, is it can become part of the language of the way you talk to clients about this, right. you know, yeah. and that's where it gets powerful. Um, it's really hard when it's bespoke every time. Um, and yes. that's probably something that we struggled with, um, that we found hard. And I, I probably am about halfway. I reckon, you know, a, a your own sort of practice chart of accounts, but then I always ended up picking one thing that we broke out for a client because it was their one right. disastrous thing. You know, yeah, like, it's sure. a shocker. Yeah. That's like, quite, yeah. <laughs> so you have you can have a custom category for the client, but in terms of you know, real power users of MoneySoft, the ones that do that do it the best, will generally have their own chart of accounts and it's locked down. Yeah. And they say, this is how we actually look at your cash flow and they'll tell the client how to do it. So MoneySoft's not coming along and telling the businesses how to do it. We have, we have defaults. Yeah. But we generally allow our customers to be very creative in the way that they use the software and, and, and impose their own process. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's but the best users will impose that their process on their clients. Yeah, and I, and I would strongly recommend doing that. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. That Don't makes let a lot the of clients sense. how it's analysed. You tell yeah, them exactly. <laughs> well, because yeah. the the it's interesting the logical way, and there's you know everybody's seen a budget and the way things are broken down. That's great, but logic doesn't necessarily drive emotion, and and a lot of this yeah. is about identifying emotive categories. To yeah, me. totally. You know, and so it's it, and you're right. You know, determining that for your client base or for the your niche that you're targeting is really important um, because yep. you've got to be able to match that. It can't be too vanilla. It can't feel too yeah. distant. It's got to feel connected um, with however else you're talking to them about what they need to do. Um, yeah, that that's works. exactly right. And that's generally what you know the most successful customers of ours do that. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. So in terms of the um, the individuals within a practice that are then sort of engaging with MoneySoft, yep. um, do you have, like some practices, it's just the advisors, some it's the whole team. Like how is that sort of running now that you guys, you've been a, around a while now. So I'm imagining yeah. you're in, really embedded in some practices. Um, yeah, you yeah. Talk me through the difference there. Look, I, I, there's, I don't think I can really... Um, give you a structured answer on that because it's uh, you know the businesses are are very different in terms i can't give you a structured answer in terms of the position of the people that we yeah that we interact with but what i can tell you is that the ones we interact most with are the ones that are very much focused on their service focused versus you know the the old okay okay client here's a tool you're on your own and i'll right. come back and give you some service 
And we still do have a fair few customers that come along and want to use the software like that and believe that putting the software in front of clients will give them some sort of advantage. And it may, but it's marginal. Yeah. And I generally don't like to take those kinds of customers on anymore because yeah. I know it will usually fail. Yeah. But the very, the very service-focused ones who are saying, okay, we're asking you to pay us X hundred, X thousand dollars, whatever it is. We're going to make sure this works for you. Right. That's that's generally the stance of the people that we're dealing with all the time. Yeah, and they might you they might have a admin assistant, client service officer, offshored people. It could be the advisors themselves, depending on the size of their business. But they're all doing the same thing. They might not be, you know, hold the same position, but they're doing the same. Yeah, and I think that's something that um, you've probably witnessed this even more than I have. Working with practices is one of the things they struggle to get their hands or their heads around is. You know, you can have somebody that's either in the support team or, like you say, offshore, uh, you know, follow a whole lot of rules in a system mm. like MoneySoft and then flag exceptions or other things to the advisor as they come up Correct. that you don't yeah. have to be doing every tiny bit yourself. That's right. Um, yeah. And that's when these things can get really powerful. And we've sort of applied that across all of our tech usage. We, you know, we've engaged a lot of people that'll get it, get it to a certain point and then highlight anything they can't solve or anything that stands out to the advisor and then, you know, off the advisor goes. So Yeah, that's that, right. I'm it's a hygiene that's, process, right? It it's correct. really a hygiene process. So correct. you get someone to carry out the hygiene process and, and then you can, you know, as the business owner or the advisor can concentrate on the higher value activities. Yeah. And look, we can we can tell ourselves, oh, but how are they going to catch that special thing that only we can catch? It's like, well, my view is if you write your rules well enough for them, they will catch it. Yeah, that's no. right. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's about you. Yeah. Correct, that's right? Taking it out of your brain, the process you're using, and then writing it down well enough. Um, yeah. And, and, look, and we do help customers with that. And, uh, you know, that's part of the onboarding process that we provide. We recognize that that is a key piece of the puzzle. Um, yeah. And we, we provide a free trial period. And that's really the purpose of it. So that we can, A, make sure that the customer who's trialing money soft has that sort of mindset so we know yep. yes okay this will be successful and then b help them along that path and give them tips and tricks and and show this is how the, the our successful customers do it here's the work instruction almost pre-written for you yeah exactly <laughs> yeah. so if somebody's um considering a tool like this then you know is there anything you'd suggest they do before you know, onboarding the tool before, like, is there any prep work or or heads up you'd give of the, you know people that have done it successfully versus not that you think the practice yeah. could do? Oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely, and, and that really comes down to um, the the service that you are either currently providing or proposed to provide have a very good handle on what that service process map looks like. Yeah a very good handle on what the the tasks are that need to be carried out what the inputs and outputs are and the and the and the processing tasks are as part of that service offering and then ask yourself okay or ask us can a tool like MoneySoft help with this right. process and that's yeah. really where the most successful usage of of tools or any technology really comes from do a bit of prep work like that see you know think of what you're going to use it for and how it, how it might give you benefit then dive in yeah, uh, but it won't expose itself just by going and trialing money soft and yeah. oh, there's some great bells and whistles and features. And stuff. Yeah, and look, I'm going to be completely honest um, with the audience here. That's exactly what we did ages ago. Is we've we I tinkered because I'm you know tech curious, like fatally tech curious. <laughs> so it's like, oh, I want to play with this. Looks great. And but what we didn't have yet was well, what is the problem I'm trying to solve for the clients? And so we did put some clients through it. They got immense value, but we hadn't yet got to the point where I had a this is the offer I want to deliver. This is the gap. Therefore what fits. You have to you know? systemize it. That's right. Yeah. Exactly. And, look, and and just just to sort of be clear, we have absolutely no problem with someone coming and doing what you just mm. described. Come and have a look at the software. Get some ideas. No problem. That's yeah. that's absolutely cool. But just set your expectations accordingly. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And and no, I completely agree. And and I think that's the thing. And look, it may actually be if if people are sort of embarking a bit early on in that sort of cash flow world or any of the other ways that that we'll talk through, people can apply the tool. Um, sometimes it is a matter of trying it out for a few clients, yeah, right? I mean, absolutely. that's 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 valid. But I completely agree. What stalled us 
was we didn't then go, all right, well, stop. What is the offer going to be? You know, we we ended up on other projects and all sorts of other distractions. So for us in our future project plan, the first step is then going to be what is literally the consumer experience we want to design and where does a tool like this fit, yeah. right? Yeah. And what do we want it to do? Um, because for some clients, what was interesting in the, some of the testing we did, for some of them, they never really looked at the app at all. It was us. It was all about no. our data and what we needed. No, you know, and no, I think and, that's a bit of a switch clients, for advisors yeah, too, right? That's right. And clients are very much the secondary user of tools, yeah. of PFM tools. Yeah. And and it's important that that everyone realises that the client is the secondary user and they yeah. will always be, except the really, you know, OCD ones, but they're not that that prevalent, right? <laughs> exactly. And yeah. I, and it, that is a difference. I, and I think we can get really obsessed with, whoa, but wouldn't it be great if they looked all the time at the, like, yeah, but they're not going to. No. No, yeah. no, there's all sorts of other notifications on their phone they're going to look at first. <laughs> That's know? right. Yeah. Um, uh, this- clients, clients want advisors and coaches to come to them and tell them what they need to do. Yeah. Just give me the instructions. What do I need to do? Like you're the expert. Give me the expert advice and the expert instructions and I'll, then I'll go do it. And then I don't want to have to worry about it anymore. That's what I'm paying you to do. Right? Yeah. That's, <laughs> exactly. that's, that honestly is the, the attitude and, and how it should be looked at. Yeah. So to that end, let's talk about sort of the client, uh, the end client experience as opposed to the advisor client or practice sure. client. Yep. Then, you know, when we use the word client portal, there's now, I mean, portal is the new black for 2023, mm. right? It's become this thing we're all talking about. So to help people understand, you know, what elements you guys have or don't have from a client portal perspective, then clearly, okay, we've got the the cash flow and all this information that's coming through. Great. What else is there in terms of the way you can interact with a client via the tool? Yep, sure. Um, we have various ways to communicate so there's there's emailing there's automated reports so you can actually send you can send custom alerts straight out of the software if you're logged in there as the advisor and the and the user um so there's plenty of communication options um obviously a great way to communicate is just by showing relevant information straight on the dashboard yep um, which which we are very much focused on Um, and you and you want to keep uh, information that you're putting in front of the client. My, in my view, uh, being an engineer, uh, <laughs> I like the, the KISS principle. Yeah. You've got to keep it nice and simple for the client so that they can see, this is where I'm at, what do I need to do? Now, there are some more advanced ways of communicating and we have some some customers who use the transaction notes in the transactions list to communicate with clients and they use a custom category. So, for example, they might categorize a transaction as client note, yeah. Uh, and then put um, a transaction note on each of those transactions that they've categorized that way. And all the client has to do is log into MoneySoft, find the client note transactions, and categorize them to what they need to be. But okay. all of the rest of the work's done for them. So you can use some process means of communicating too right. if you're smart about it. Right. And most people don't really want to be bombarded with messages all the time. And I just, I think that is an absolute cracking way of dealing with clients, the way that this particular customer has come up with, because the client knows I can log in whenever I like. All I've got to look for is this set of transactions. And once I do that, my work's done. Yeah. I've done my homework. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, Beautiful. And they get automated reports sent out to them every, I think they do weekly, that particular customer. And they do some weekly, some monthly, and some quarterly. Yep. So that's really where the client's getting then their key communication is in those reports. Here's how you're tracking to the things that we have spoken about and that we care about. But otherwise, all you have to do is log in, look for this particular category of transactions and read the note against it and do what's asked. Awesome. So So then in terms of the other elements of a client portal, and we're using that really broadly, um, Mm. then I'm assuming, you know, MoneySoft isn't designed to be the document signing, the document vault, the any of those sort of things that it's really about? Oh, we do, the yeah. oh, you do? No, okay. we do. Yeah, so we do document vault. We do, we've got a DocuSign integration. Okay. But I mean, it's not our key focus. We yep. understand that that is part of the process automation mix. Yeah. So it's in there. It's definitely in there. And, and I mean, we actually, at the end of the fact find, we'll pump out a fact find document in PDF and that gets shot across to the client 
in DocuSign for sign off, right? Yep. So we really look at those integrations as part of process automation. We have been asked for the ability to send PDFs through the you know, through the MoneySoft portal and DocuSign integration for signature of other types of documents, and we've got that on the roadmap, so that'll mm-hmm. come. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's there, you know, your extra plan integration, document vault, you know, if we're talking along those lines, we don't want to store the documents. Yep. This is still this is still an internal an internal, let's say, debate I'm having with the <laughs> development team. I, I think it's much smarter to, to outsource that to a Google Drive or a one drive, you know, Microsoft OneDrive right. or a Dropbox or all right. three. So right. that'll probably be some more integrations that we do where we say, okay, they look after the document vault over there. That's what they do really well. Yep. We're going to do the process automation really well, but we'll yep. use all these other bits and pull them all together so that and, yep. and on your subject of client portal, that's really our philosophy. We started off with pulling a whole bunch of bank accounts, superannuation funds, credit cards, loans all together in one place. Mm-hmm. So we'll keep pulling stuff into one place. Yeah. But we don't want to change where you have to store your documents. Like yeah. I put all my stuff in Google Drive. I want to keep it there. Yeah. I don't want to put it in MoneySoft. I want to keep it yeah. in Google Drive. But it, you know, we'll, we'll stick to the aggregation of data and stuff into a single place, right? <laughs> and and that'll, I think that'll be how we, we, we ultimately do it. Awesome. And so, so then for the way practices are then utilising it, so, I mean, that example you're given where it's, I mean, basically the client has some homework, right? It's like, okay, yeah. this has come through. We don't know what the hell that transaction is. <laughs> that we right, need right. you to identify it. Yeah. Are there, and that sort of sounds like to me one extreme in terms of it's quite, regularly interactive and i'm imagining that's yes. in that first we need to resolve some stuff process like it's that early wow it's that's actually an ongoing process for that particular customer they're really hands-on yeah they, okay. they service their their clients you know heavily. heavily they're mostly they're mostly um debt recycle yep. side, but they so they do anyway yeah sorry I should, no I'm, not at all no that's helpful so yeah. That'll be some, I'm imagining there's others that maybe it's more about at review time, whether that's every six months or whatever it is, where they're using it as a, as like an update. So it's like, okay, how are yeah. you traveling? Is that fair? Is that a yeah. fair description of how practices are using? No, I, I think it's close. I think yep. um, you're on the right track for sure. So um, I think um, what would be more relevant to most practices and most listeners is that a lot of our customers who have who do have a lot of clients on board on the software will generally look at the high level. They'll yep. have their own custom report that tracks particular KPIs against the plan that they right. set for the client. And that's this is generally sort of fairly cookie cutter plan, but you know, they'll have different client types, right? And there's certain yep. client types that go into MoneySoft. So they've got a cookie cutter plan, but they don't worry about the transactions and yep. so on. They actually say, Well, if you want to run a budget and keep on track to the goals that we've set to you in MoneySoft and, you know, and keep on track to your debt reduction uh, plan or whatever the case may be. You go in and budget yourself, right? We're not going to yeah. budget. For you. you use that tool to help you achieve the outcomes that we're setting and reporting. Yeah. And I would say that's probably the most scaled usage of MoneySoft, that type of use. Yeah, okay. Because it is so, yeah, a, um, yeah, I think it's because there's there's a wide variety, isn't there? There's the people that, that, like a bit of a disaster, right? <laughs> Where yeah. you're going to have to point out the 12 different things they need to specifically change. Um, you may even have to give them ways to change them. Um, yeah. you know, it's a lot of behavioural stuff. Whereas for many people, I'm betting it's it's the insights really the trigger. It's just understanding where they were and where they got to, and has what they've embarked on moved the dial. Like have, yeah. has has it yeah. changed? You know, and and I think actually. Um, it's probably a bit healthier anyway. I mean, I think about the relation, you know, a similar thing with diet. You know, I'm I'm never, like I watch people when it's that whole really narrow calorie counting thing and it can, can become unhealthy, yeah. like mentally unhealthy really quickly. And Absolutely. I think it's the same with money. Yeah. I think it can become yeah. really unhealthy. Um, That's right. Yeah, whereas that overarching, oh, good, progress made or plateaued, you know, yeah, yeah, um, sort right. of feedback I think is probably healthier for the individual and they can find their own. Now, maybe you could have, you could support it with some behavioral exercises that somebody could do, tips and tricks, how you might, you know, expand yeah. the gap between what you earn and what you spend. But, but yeah, I think that sort of middle ground just seems a little bit, um, it also puts a lot of onus back onto the client because really this is their spending. They're the one that's standing. Totally. It's got to be teamwork. Yeah. Right. And- that's right. And, and I, I think that's another tip that I would provide in terms of 
um, you know, tips for success is that uh, the customers that I see that do really well with money soft and this sort of process automation and, and this scaled type of a, advice offering, um, they actually reject some clients too. They'll say, yeah. no, you're not right. You're not ready. Yeah. We're not here to, we're not here to wipe your butt for you. Yeah. Right? yeah. Okay. You, you've got to be part of this team. Yeah. Make yeah. it work. We'll give you the tools and we'll tell you where you've got to go and set your plan for you, but you've got to execute. Yeah. We're not executing for you. <laughs> no. And, and it's, it is an important realization, I think, for any type of work, whether it's this or, or, you know, financial advice in other spaces is, you know, a client who sees themselves at the beginning as a victim, you know, in terms of like, I, things happen to me, not, you know, I happen to things. Yeah. That's, that's a red flag. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. That's a big red flag. And, and it's, you know, we're definitely there to help. But oh, just tell me, you know, just tell me what to do. I don't know about this stuff. It's like, yes, you do. You've got money in your wallet or you've got your card. You know enough. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. And look, there's got to be direction at some level. So, okay, this yeah. is where we need to get to. That's your next, your next task, your next bit of homework, your next, you know, mini objective. Yeah. Off you go. Go and hit it. Right? Yeah. And I think that actually gives both parties a lot of satisfaction. You know, you're working as a team. The client can, the clients see that they can achieve it. Um, and it, and it feeds on positivity. So it's a good way to approach it. For sure. So I am curious about something. This is a bit out of left field. I haven't I haven't prepped you for this. Um, so I apologize in advance. Yeah. Um, you guys now have a whole lot of, uh, you know, individuals or families or whatever into the system. Oh. Are you starting to get any broad sense of, you know, the average that people are spending as, on this as a percent of income or, you know, that sort of stuff? Are you starting yeah. to see that sort of data? Yeah, we actually already have it. We've got a benchmarking report in MoneySoft. Okay. Awesome. Already, so in terms of that behavioural change that you were talking about, Peter, so there are quite a few of our customers that use that benchmarking report for that purpose. Yeah. Where a client might think, "Hey, I'm not spending much at the TAB or on shoes or you know going out to restaurants or whatever." Well, have yeah. a look at what everyone else does. Yeah. So there's your, there's your benchmark. So you're double, right? Well, at least come back to twenty percent more. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> or, exactly. Yeah, so there are tools in there, and yes, of course, we've got we've got a heap of data um, that we can use to benchmark on. Um, it's a matter of actually running those analytics and the data science process to update it from time yeah. to time. Yeah, so okay. What we've got in there is, you know, perhaps a little bit old. Um, yep. And we, we could update it uh, pr- possibly in the next few months, but we already do do that, yeah. Look, and I think, um, you know, AI and all sorts of other things are going to start to help make those things really deeply relevant. You know, it'll be rather than broad averages, they'll get narrow. And, you know, all that sort of stuff I think will start to come out um, because we tell ourselves stories about, oh, but I'm just like everybody else. Surely everybody's doing these things. And so many of those stories are uh, just off way off base. Yes. You know, and, and, and I see that a lot actually with, funnily enough, with food as a spending item. Lots of, oh, but everybody spends like this. You're like, ah, uh, no. No, no. There's only two of you and you're spending, yeah. you know, even just grocery shopping, you're spending at a family of six rate. Like, yeah, you know. yeah. I just had yeah. a similar conversation with my wife just the other day. Funny enough, yeah. And the thing yeah. is, it's funny because people go, oh, but who are you to judge? Oh, not judging. So I'm ne- I never judge that stuff, but it's doing it, be informed. If yes, you are going to yes, spend that way, do it because you up. know exactly. Yeah. Like, I mean, nope, we love we love getting, you know, only organic this or, or you know, meat direct from the farm or, you know, I mean, my husband and I fall firmly into that category. We're massive foodies. So, yeah. you know, our dollars, yeah. absolutely. But um, it's un, it's knowing that, knowing yes, the dollars and that reflects. Yeah, and you may, sure. you may spend more in one area and less in another and that's okay. It all balances out. That's fine. Exactly. But like you said, having that information to hand is, is what allows you to make um, smart decisions. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And also, I think... I think it alleviates you know, misdirected guilt. So I think when you make the conscious choice, you're like, "What?" Well, but I really love that thing. I think it can take away the guilt you might feel yeah, um, that's potentially inappropriate, you know. Um, maybe yeah. you feel guilty about that thing over there that yeah. you don't even know you're spending on. That's right. You know? <laughs> It's a junk you bought that's just going to go in the bin. Exactly, you know, exactly. But, but of course, that's right. And it's you've got to have a healthy relationship with money and the way that you spend. And you know, what do we go to work for and earn? And yes. you know, it's there to enjoy to some extent, but you know you also want to build wealth, so you yeah. just get the balance right. And and that's 
I think is a really important point if advisors or coaches are going to go into that realm. Mm -hmm. uh, that this is not it's not um, it's not all stick. In fact, it's mostly carrot. Yeah. Right. And that's the way you've got to approach it. Yeah, I 100% agree. I've been speaking to somebody recently who's done a lot of work through reading Barefoot Investor, right? And I mean, kudos to them. They've really gone hard, which is great. But it's actually really demoralized them because right. there's no carrot, right? It, it, yeah. Sorry, that's not fair. There is this to a certain extent, but they've been so focused on the frugality. Right, yeah. They, there hasn't been a why. Like, yeah. why the hell are we doing this? <laughs> like, that's, like, yeah, that's you right, know, yeah. like it's, it's we're, we're, you know, not doing things. And continuing to not do things and even not do things for our kids, potentially. Yeah. Um, and so, miserable. exactly. Yeah. So, so you know, it's, you're right, it's that balance. It's getting it so that actually it then drives you into other behaviors, better behaviors over and over again because it feels good. Yeah, that's not, right. It's that positive reinforcement. Oh, yeah. You know, the, the, it, it, the positivity feeds on itself. Achieving something, okay, you've given something up, you've made a change and, you, and you've got a great outcome. Okay, yeah. let's go again. I'm ready to try again. Exactly. So, exactly. Yeah. Now you've touched on integrations, um, yep. but I just want to make sure we've we've sort of caught them all. Um, then you talked about so X Plan is one of the things that you guys integrate yes. with. So, yes, X Plan. We've got a few integrations with X Plan actually. Okay. Uh, and so, what level? Because I think that's people probably don't understand actually that that you know an integration isn't isn't a one size fits all sort of right. experience right. for tech. Right. So talk us through that. So you know how does that differ in terms of the different places you might integrate with X Plan? Yeah, look, I, I'd probably just keep it to two areas. Yep. One being CRM, which right. is which is the fact find data, yep. and the other being the portfolio system, IPS. So that's all of your you know balances and transaction data. Yeah, okay. So anything that's in MoneySoft, including property values, um, okay. will go across into X plan yep. to complete the client's portfolio in IPS and then any data in, in the MoneySoft fact find can be pumped into X plan as well. And of course, yeah, we okay. totally customise the fact find according to whatever the, the, the client wants. Um, but they're the two main areas. We do have a budget integration, which is quite an old one. Yep. Uh, and have been around for a long time, but definitely the two most used are the CRM and IPS integration. Okay, perfect. So then outside of X plan, who else do you guys integrate with? Uh, Midwinter, yep. same, same deal as X plan, same sorts of data. Uh, we integrate with Fin365. Yep. We integrate with DocuSign. We integrate with uh, uh, Link Group's CRM, which is a superannuation administration platform. That's probably more internal for them, but yep. it is there. Who else have we got? There's Dash. Is about to. Oh, I, yeah. I, I might be speaking out of turn, actually. But, uh, so the Dash <laughs> we won't tell anybody, will we? Yeah. <laughs> Dash integration is done. Um, so wait, that's waiting for an announcement. Yep. And Zeppo. Yeah, okay. Fantastic. Oh, so they're the ones off the top of my head. There'll be a couple more in that's yeah, the perfect. Thing. Well, and I'm I'm betting that that if somebody's uncertain or or really, um, you know, is using the tool and therefore can think of something that they'd like to integrate, they should just ask because it may not be possible now, but it might be something down the track that you guys could factor yeah. in. Is that fair? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. And, and actually, I always forget about this, but uh, you know, another integration that we have is with um, a payment gateway called Eway, and part of our roadmap and and plans for the future is to expand that integration to allow advisors to take payments straight through the software from their oh, clients. Fantastic. Instead of having to you know, invoice them separately. So that's something that the Americans, which listeners may not know that we launched in the US, but that's something our American friends are really keen on. Yeah. And it's quite, uh, it's quite prevalent in the US that the software platforms allow uh, the professional users to do that. So it's, in, in fact, a feature that we're going to need to get out to be successful over there. Okay. So, and so just to get a sense of what they otherwise would have to do if i mean sorry aside from through a deal group it's like a stripe is it alternative to stripe or something like yeah, that where you yeah, we, a, yeah yeah anyway is global payments yeah platform. Cool. I think yeah it's called, uh, yeah okay or global payments so it's the same as a stripe yep so it'll just mean you can create a website sign up to this package put your credit card in take payment and Off you go. the whole payment chain just happens automatically yeah, yeah, nice. And look, I think there is going to be more of that as as the way we charge and what we charge for evolves in advice. Yeah. You know, we're going to need to have easier ways to do this stuff. Um, we make well, again, it inordinately yeah, hard at the moment. That's right. Again, it just makes sense from a process efficiency point of view. Um, yeah. You know, you're pulling out a whole bunch of manual work um, and you're also not having to chase bills. Yes. So, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> that's all good. That's right. 
Absolutely. Now, in terms of the the practices you're currently um, working with, is there anything you think that people don't take enough advantage of? Like you think, oh, you know, they could really get some value out of this particular feature or, or you know, element of the app? Um, I think in terms of standard feature, I would say goals. Right. It's probably not used as much as, as it could be. And the customers that do use it, use it really heavily and successfully. Right. So goals, I think, is just as a standard feature, a really, a really good one. As an add-on feature, um, and in fact, we do scheduled reporting for free as part of a standard subscription. So scheduled reporting would be another standard feature that okay. is possibly not used as much as it could be and is very, very helpful to, to customers. Then there's custom reporting. So right. you know, I've got a particular type of report that I like to send to my clients. It's a standard one across my client base. Hey, MoneySoft, can you create this and have it pump out of the software automatically? Yes, we can. Okay. So that's a, that's a, a real big one. Um, and then getting a bit higher up the chain to the more advanced um, users, just single sign-on. So uh, you know, if you've got your own website that you have customers log into, they can automatically be logged into MoneySoft. Okay. Through single sign-on. So we provide single sign-on capability. And in fact, we do that for free as okay. well. You have to develop it, but you get the feature for free. So, yeah, okay. you know, give your clients that sort of thing. And then we get into, you know, obviously the integrations, XPLAN in particular, um, the integration with FactFind. I think, um, you know, there are customers that use that very, very successfully. Yeah. Uh, and once it's in place, it saves a heck of a lot of time. Yeah. Pain, a heck of a lot. Yeah. So getting it again, getting up the value chain here, I'd say that's that'll be next cab off the rank. And then it's you know, for the really, really advanced customers, it's our API. We've actually got uh, several customers that write their own apps over the top of our API. So they put money soft features in their own app. Um, and, they, and clients don't even see the word money soft anywhere. <laughs> but, okay. But they, they use all of our capabilities inside their own app. Yeah, okay. So, so you're all about the data and the analysis and they're putting a skin. Yeah, they put their own skin, and, and you know, if you've got uh, you know the right amount of scale, I obviously wouldn't recommend doing that or even white labeling until you hit the right level of, of scale. Yeah. Uh, but once you are up around the five hundred to a thousand client level, um, and you want to put you want features that you're putting in front of your client base, mm. it becomes a bit of a pain to have to rely on a supplier to do that for you. Right. So write your own app, put a skin over the top of yours, and you and you're a lot more nimble. You can put yeah. things in front of your clients, you know, as and when you please. And it really does start to to make it such a wonderful um, user experience then too, you know, so the things that you can do and the way it can look and all that sort of stuff. I mean, it's something that um, we never really get that far down in a lot of financialist stuff, advice stuff, but I think it can make a huge difference um, yeah, to the way people engage. Um, yeah. So, and, you know, that's exciting that you guys have that capability. Um, you know, we all just sort of need to, get off our butt and get to that point. So yeah, it's a, it's a progression, right? It's a progression. Yeah. So, you know, if we, and we're talking about some very advanced things here. So, but, yeah. you know, we have all of the out-of-the-box capabilities that will give a huge amount of value to users. And then it's just a matter of working your way up the chain and, and you'll stop where it makes sense for you yeah. to stop or you'll keep going, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Um, you know, and, the, and the natural progression of going all the way would be get rid of money soft and do your own integration with, financial account data aggregators and Ooh. deal with all that crap yourself. Right? <laughs> oh, but I don't think I'm ever going to no be one, up for that. No, one's gone there yet. no that sounds like yeah. a disaster. <laughs> oh, goodness. Yeah. Um, but I, I'm interested, you mentioned single sign-on and it's something that um, I think we probably underrate a little in advice because you look, I don't think we look at our own behaviors enough with this stuff. Like, you know, what do I love about using Kindle and having books via Amazon? It's the single click yep. and the thing is just in my, in my iPad, you know, it's, and, and so, you know, single sign on, even if it's through something else and it's, it matches, like that makes a big difference, yep. a huge yep. difference to the likelihood of somebody being willing to go in, you know, the ease with which they do, you know, all that sort of stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Never forget to put yourself in the boots of the client. Yeah. You know, and what it's like for them. Yeah, absolutely. So then, oh, looking into the future. So first of all, there must be some things that are just on the development path, so that you guys have planned. But then I'm sort of curious about any wish list items that oh would be lovely to get to. So start with the reality. Yeah. <laughs> What's yeah. coming up? Okay. Well, we have open banking coming out in June. So we've uh, we've 
worked with Yodley to get that done. We've got the accreditation. We are hosting our environments in Link Group, so we'd be under the same regime as superannuation data in terms okay. of privacy and security. So these are some really sort of back-end big wins that we're, yep. we're getting, which we, which will give our customers and, the, and their client base a lot more comfort around security and data privacy. Nice. So that's a big one, and we're really concentrating on that. New mobile apps are coming out in June, Ooh. July, right? lining up with the, with the open banking. So the mobile apps will be a lot more feature-rich, a lot more usable, and we'll shift towards mobile, mobile-led yeah. development. I won't say mobile first, but mobile-led. Yeah. So we'll really look at how we get that in. Obviously, international has started, and we're working on that. So that means we've got international data mm-hmm. as well. Nice. Um, and that's probably the most interesting thing for the Australian audience. Um, probably don't care that we're in the US or the UK, but we've got international data for this, so that yeah, okay. you know, may be something that we put out. But in terms of futures and where we, we want to be, probably next cab off the rank will be a debt reduction calculator or yep. tool. Uh, that we're going to be sort of half report, half in-app tool. Yep. Um, there will be a communications channel. So we, we really want to do in-app chat and integrate that in with document e-signatures and so yeah. on. So you can actually do – and I'm a really big fan of not forcing someone to come and meet when it's convenient for you. Get yeah. into the portal, leave a message for the client, they get a notification to their phone, they come back when they're finished work and they do what they've got to do, right? Yeah. You don't have to sit yeah. there at the same time as each other. So yeah. that's really the, the thrust behind that one, having the in-app chat and the communications channel. And then finally, um, there will be some developments around retirement income covenant. Yeah, okay. Income. So, okay, yeah. Oh, exciting. Okay, so so more than just the reality of their current data, it's all what would be possible or, or what's it going to look like in the future sort of Correct. stuff. So that's... Yeah. Yeah, which is exciting because the um, <laughs> I'm always wary of uh, really complex forecasts for clients because there's too many assumptions, and the minute you get more than one, you know, it becomes something that that is you know as long as a piece of string and all that sort of stuff. So yeah. I love simple tools that just give them a really um, once again that sort of thumbs up, thumbs down of where they're at. Um, right. Yeah. Yeah. To, well, to we're working with we're working with Link Group on that, obviously, and yep. um, you know, being in the superannuation space and and servicing the super funds. So their solution will be really complicated. Yeah, no doubt about it. <laughs> and we'll and we'll help them with that. But then we're going to take the the bits and stick to the Kiss principle, as I said, and put something in in general money soft that yeah, will no. provide at least a tool that can be used by the by the, by the individual. Of those yeah, awesome. To, yeah, awesome, perfect. Now, is there anything else we've missed? Any elements that we've missed of the tool? or, or I, I, Look, I don't think so, Peter, and it's been a real pleasure talking to you. The audience probably wants us to stop now. So, uh, oh, I, don't I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. The underrating no, them. I think we've covered everything and it was yeah, a, a, a great chat. Thank you very much. Not at all. Not at all. You're very welcome. All right, Advice Explorers. If you'd like to find out more about MoneySoft, then the website link is in the episode show notes, along with John's LinkedIn details. So I'm sure if you just nudged him, he can point you in the right direction of who should look after you and, and can do a demo, all those sort of things that you should do. Um, thank you so much for joining us. I'm excited to hear where you guys have got to since I last um, saw MoneySoft and can't wait to see what's happening down the track. So best of luck thank in the future. Much. Thank you. So, are you a current user of MoneySoft? I know there's a number of you out there. Um, Perhaps you've just started or you've been using it for a while. I know the wonderful Adele Martin um, uses the tool really well. So, I'd love to hear what everybody thinks, what their feedback is on the tool. Please head over to the Ensemble Community Platform and share your insights. Um, I personally would love to hear your take. Um, In terms of my thoughts, then I think it's really it's really powerful to think about the way instant insights into a client's um, positioning or situation outside of, say, just an investment account or a super account, how valuable that can be. 
right? And there's so many parts of advice where that can be valuable. We spoke about, you know, the um, affordability of advice being one. Uh, you could make a tool like this just a core part of your insurance offering. And I know that's not <laughs> necessarily something a lot of us would think, but I think you could really take advantage of getting confidence about the cash flow that is available. Similarly, um, with somebody's updated, you know, wealth position, including, you know, their you know, cash accounts and, and things like that. So I do think we've got an opportunity to use these tools well above or beyond um, cash flow coaching or monitoring. However, I do think all of us should take us a moment to consider um, what cash flow monitoring or coaching or other, you know, offerings we could provide to clients to really get their confidence around the way they spend money. Remembering, you know, to invest and get a return, you have to have money to invest, you know, and so for many people, that's not as easy as it might sound. And in the current environment, people are struggling with, um, you know, the hip pocket getting hit by a whole lot of things, including interest rates. So, you know, these sort of tools are absolutely well worth considering and, you know, they are benefiting from, you know, you know, overseas interest, the US, you know, um, John's making progress over there in the UK. We can benefit from a tool from here going further into the advice markets or other markets over there. So, um, you know, this is something, you know, and there are other tools that do these feeds, but I think we all should just take a moment to consider how we might be able to position it in our practice and then go and ask them, you know, put that idea to them and see how they might set it up, you know, how many users you would therefore need, how many logins, what it will cost all those sort of things. So, you know, I'd really challenge each of our thinking on what we imagine a tool like that is. It's not just money coaching. It's not, you know, cash coaching. It's, you know, we think broader, think bigger, and really imagine how this could become a core part or a core tool in what you're doing. And like John said, you know, your client may never look at it right? The minute we stop it being about what the client does with it um, and what it, it becomes what we can do with it, what that data can do for the service we offer, I think that's when you'll get really creative. Um, I would love to hear your ideas. I'd love to hear what you've already come up with because I think there's some magic we can all work in that space. Now, as you know, if you've listened to any more episodes uh, before this one of the Advice Tech Podcast, there is only one skill we need to become true bionic advisors, and that's just avid curiosity. Now, to help you build that habit, today's Curiosity Corner app that I'd love you to take a look at is Muse. You can find it at Muse app, that's M-U-S-E-A-P-P.com, and their tagline is diving into big ideas. Now, I've just got to laugh because actually when I typed up the note about this, it said diving into bog ideas, which I'm pretty sure is not the tagline. So please excuse me for getting momentarily distracted by my own, you know, bad spelling. But we've chatted uh, on the podcast before about brainstorming tools, like things that can can help you come up with ideas or, or collaborate um, with team members. What's interesting is what makes Muse a bit different is that it's got this concept of nested boards, a board being like a whiteboard, like imagine you're brainstorming, right? And then you've got your whiteboard. Um, you might start brainstorming about, say, your whole advice process, and it's all up there on the whiteboard. Then you decide, you know what, we're going to deep dive into risk profiling, say, as one step. Well, you could have a nested board inside that bigger whiteboard we're talking about, a nested board just for the brainstorming on that you do on risk profiling. Sort of imagine it as a layer below the original board that covers just that one topic in a much deeper fashion. Basically, nested muse boards let you sort of dive in and out of ideas with this sort of zooming interface. Um, and since sort of everything in Muse is laid out really visually, you know, then file names or document titles or any of that um, just isn't needed, right? You, you're going to be able to find what you're looking for just because of this particular um, nested board layout. Um, so when you know make you make a new board, you can just start putting down your thoughts and ideas. You don't sort of have to organise it too much or get too structured with yourself. And you can give it a name later, right? When you actually know what it's about. Sometimes the idea is just there and you're not sure actually what you need to call it. This is absolutely an app for anyone out there who struggles with the structure of most brainstorming tools. You know, maybe you need something that's a little more free-flowing. So let me know if you check it out and how you go with it. But this is another different type. You know, if you've struggled with other ones, Miro or other boarding tools online, then this could be another one that might just work for you. Well, 
That's all we've got for this week, folks. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast so you'll get your advice tech fix automatically sent to you each Friday. And look, if if you're still feeling pretty overwhelmed about where to start on your advice tech journey, then I'd really encourage you to reach out to me on LinkedIn, ask what we've got coming up. We've got some lunch and learn sessions. I've got a niche down and scale up masterclass coming up. So please don't hesitate to link to reach out Sorry, on LinkedIn. You can find me at Peter MD, P-E-I-T-A-M-D. Otherwise, I'll look forward to turning up in your earbuds next week. And remember, advice explorers, Stay curious.